Hi, I'm Susie from Nail Care Education, and today I want to do a design that you can do real quick at the end of an appointment for a client or for yourself. I'm going to use some stamping. Here's some tricks. Let's get started. I grabbed a couple of stamps I've collected from my stamp collection and it's important very specifically what stamp I'm grabbing because I want it to so that I can color in some of the sections so it's not just a stamp but just sort of coloring in a little bit to give it a different kind of look. So I'm not going to use these ones although they're really cool I kind of like those but I am going to use this one here and I've picked this sort of abstract kind of metal-y kind of steampunkish kind of if you will. So that's what I'm going to use today. So I've polished my nails. I've just used a gel coat and I just make sure that I cure it and make sure that it's um, completely dry. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some paint. Now, paint that's used for these stamp pads has to be a little bit thicker. You can't use just regular old paint. It's gotta be this particular concoction. I don't know what they've done to make it better, but it's just a little bit thicker so that when you apply it on, it's almost like it goes on like a vinyl that you can actually almost peel it off but it has to be thicker. Nail polish just off the shelf is just a little too thin. I would suspect if you had nail polish, oh, that was old and sort of thickening a little bit and aging, that might work. So I've got to this nail polish here and you can't use paint with this, it's just nail polish. So this is the design I'm gonna pick right in here. So I've got my well-used scraping scraper and I got my little daughters. Just make sure that it's nice and clean. You can see that I've used this many times before. Make sure those are clean. Okay, and always have one ready because it's a bit speedy. If you let the paint sit on there for too long, by the time you pick it up, it doesn't want to transfer. It's very frustrating. It can be very annoying, this stamping situation, but once you get it, it's really cool. So I'm gonna paint it on. You don't have to do it thick. You just have to cover your design. And my nails are long, so I'm gonna do the whole section. And it is messy, like make sure you got a paper towel down. Okay, scrape it off. And then you get your, I don't even call this thing. You can see the design right there. Take your finger, get it ready, and you wanna eye it up and try to get as much surface covered as possible. I find it's better to do the cuticle area first because you can always redo the tip. See that? It lays in pretty good. And then I've got some left over here. So sometimes if I find it kind of matches up, I will just throw it in there. Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I don't. And you can scrape away little, any little extras. So I'm gonna clean this. And then I have to clean my stamping pad again. And I'm gonna do it again. Maybe just the tip part, cause I'm just gonna cover the tip of my finger this time. Great bit. Pick it up. Look at that picked up really nicely. And I'm gonna lay it in there. Yeah, that, that worked. Okay. You can actually see some of it sticking up. And I'll maybe just put a little, a few little lines in there to cover that, if it works. Yep. Uh, many of you were so helpful in telling me I was just taking Vaseline and oil and putting it around the cuticles. And then many of you told me that I can use these certain products. I've ordered some, but they're not here yet. So I'm still using my little oil until I get it. And you just paint it around like a latex and then you can peel it right off and it saves you having to clean up all these edges or putting Vaseline or oil down first. So I can't wait to get that. You'll be seeing that in my new videos whenever I do a messy thing just like this. And I'm just gonna do my next one. Clean the pad. I'm just gonna go for it and start doing all my fingers. That's a nice one. So the beauty of this, if you put gel polish on first, if you make an error, you can just wipe it off. If it's polish, you'll wipe off the polish too if you've, if you've made an error and you wanna take it off. So that is an advantage of using the gel. See if I can patchwork this in here. And then maybe try to get that guy in there. Nope, that wasn't gonna transfer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna erase the tip and redo the tip. Now 
I do use just acetone, or you can use a nail polish remover to remove it. Someone had mentioned that maybe it can kind of break down the transfer daughter thing, like this thing. I've had them for years and I've never seen that happen yet, but I suppose that could be. Oh, that transferred beautifully. Oh, that looks good. I know it's a mess, but just bear with me. It's coming. Okay, now I still have a tip to do on that ring finger and me thumb. This is just for the tip. No wonder I dry out my polish all the time. I didn't close the lids. Okay, let me just get rid of this for a sec. So I've got this really pretty gold and you can use it with a calligraphy pen or a dotting tool. I do find the calligraphy pen is better. And all I'm gonna do, just to give it that sort of steampunk look, is just sort of color in the holes. Just give it a little pizzazz. Look at that, it just brightens it right up. And then I'm gonna take some of the, I don't even know what this design is, but it almost looks like an old clock or something. Maybe that's why it's a little steampunkish looking. So I'm gonna take some of these fan parts. Now don't go over the black parts. You're just kind of coloring in, just in between. How to get an intricate look so easy without really having to be that really good at art. It's a cheat. I think that's my first nail hack. I wonder what those were. That's, I think, one. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna sort of go around and just color in some of these spots with the gold. And I do have another color. I was doing white, but it was a little stark. So remember, it's like coloring it. Stay in the lines. Don't go outside the lines. Now, if you decided to pick the flower stamp with this, you could color in red petals and do the leaves and the green. And you could really just change your whole design. And it does look cool just on its own. I do like that kind of lacy kind of look just on its own without the terrible cuticles being so black. But I'll get rid of that before the reveals. So it does look really cool just on its own. But when you do this, you're just sort of snazzing it up a little. You could really change the design, which, whichever colors you've added so intricate and detailed. You have to have good eyes and a steady hand too. Okay, I'm just gonna go to town on this. The trick is though, is, is staying within the lines and not getting rid of the black. So I mixed a little bit, I didn't have brown with me or anything, so I mixed it a little bit just to give it an off-white. This is kind of a yellowy white. The only reason why I toned the white down is so it didn't look stark white. Well, I've colored it all in. I've tried to stay within the lines and I did use my calligraphy pen, but you can use a dotting tool or even a toothpick with this. So I'm gonna top coat it and shine it up, but I've made a nice hand at the expense of <laughs> making a mess of the other hand. So if you're doing this yourself, I'd suggest maybe wearing a glove and then switching when this was dry to do your other hand or get your nail tech to do it so you don't have to make such a mess. I'm gonna to top coat it and we're gonna get a look at those reveal pictures. Well, that was a fun mess. I'd love to see this with flowers. It'd be a spring collection. Maybe I'll do that in the spring. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate all your great tips for me. They would have helped me a lot on this. I'll see you in the next video.